Okay, so this is just going to be a really quick run through um, through just some of the tools that you can see inside through the graph. So to start with, um, I'm just going to quickly go through how you set this up, how you install it. So um, from the download link, you'll have you know some of this this folder here. You've got an install text. Just read that. That's going to have some of the paths in there and just kind of tell you where everything's supposed to go. Um, what I would say is the easiest way to install this would probably be just to select the Fusion folder, copy it, and then if you go into the same directory, paste it. What it's going to do is it's going to install um, everything that's needed inside those folders as well. So if you look inside, there is a bit of a directory structure. So if you guys go inside here, there's some fuses that need installing. Um, and when you copy over the top of what you previously copied onto, um, just add to rather than replace. Okay, so once you've done that, everything should be set up. I'm just going to close these down. And then if you go into workspace, uh, go into scripts, um, go into few graph and um, just load up this work in progress one this is the latest version uh, there's two different versions but use this one um, okay it's just open on my other screen so I'm going to pull it over to this side okay so you can see here we've got these colored swatches now this is slightly changed since fusion 9 so um, originally I want these particular colored swatches uh, but if I right click on here you can see set color you've only really got these available um, and what it's going to do is when we click these colors it's going to try to match to the closest color we have available in this list um, so you'll see I've just click this hit the yellow you know, we've got that green it's not matching it identically it's trying to match up the closest color so you can see it's trying to match to say probably like this one um, if I pull this into the view here I'll just change the color of the background let's just say we'll just make this like a green color when we select this and hit auto color what's going to do is, is try to match the color of all these different background objects so what essentially we can do is we could copy that paste it um, we could have you could import artwork into here so let's just pull that into here we'll shift it quite a bit just so it's like more of an orange color uh, and let's just say you, you import hundreds of these in you know from some art some vectored artwork um, program uh, you can just select all of these, hit auto color, and then it's really easy to identify, you know, what's going on in the view here to find you know. So you know, you'll look at the artwork and think, okay, well, it's the green artwork, it's the red one, it's what you know, whichever one is. Then just go down to your flow, um, and you can quickly identify, you know, which node you need to go to quickly. Um, next up is this flexi rig. So this is very similar to, um, you know, it's like. There's, there's quite a few of these rigs as, um, around there's a little bit like rubber hose you know where you can kind of move everything around you've got a lot of control over the bend direction you've got you can change the segment so it can be like you know two pieces how many pieces you need it to be um, the stiffness of it so if you want something that's like that bends quite a lot or stretches um, you can change that you've got joint bias which will essentially shift where the elbow goes trim end so it means that you know we can layer these up so you can layer a couple of these and you could almost show like if this is arm it could be sleeves or it could be socks it could be you know, there's, lot, there's lots of different ways that you can use this um, but i think you've got more than enough control to um to make you know some simple kind of characters you could rig a full character this way as well just with this one tool just duplicate it up and reuse it okay uh moving on we've got this true ik so if i drop this in um, what I've done is I've just set up this really quick example here. So let me just move it over here a second. I'm just going to pull it into this view here. Um, and you can see this is true inverse kinematic. So it works in very much like IK in any other application. Um, just so you've got, so essentially you've, you know, you've got these three points, you've got position and you've got orientation for each one of the points. And with that, you can then link artwork to it, which then the, this, these points and these lines will then drive the position and the rotation of the artwork. So I've set something up really quicky, quick and um, dirty here. So you can see how it works, but um, it's really just this node that's going to be driving everything. then we've got this thing called pop um and the th let me just actually undo that okay 
with this, what I want to do is I want to kind of create those really quick and simple uh, motion graphic elements, but also be able to kind of do it at the current time as well. So just move your kind of your playhead to the, the time you want to add your keyframes in, hit pop, you know, you can see it's added the keyframes in there. Um, oh, where's it gone? There it is. Pull it in. Okay, so you can see, you know, it's going to start on this frame, 67. We pull it through. Yeah, so you can see that it's working there. I'm just going to hit play to so see you can quickly see that working. Uh, and because these are all procedural, you know, this this is really good. This node it kind of works very much like the MoGraph tool set where you can clone and um, offset time and do all bits and pieces. But if you look in here, there are some expressions set up in here. So you can see, you know, you've got 360 divided by the number of copies. And what that does, that equally spaces out the rotation of each one. Um, but yeah, just dig through and to see, you know, how it's going to work. And you can customize this exactly how you want to use it. If we move on to this one, we've got waves, so I've hit waves, drag this in, you've got a very similar kind of effect. So it's just essentially doing the same thing, it's dropping keyframes down at the current playhead time, um, but it's just creating that kind of like a pop type um, motion graphic element where you might have you know a finger touching a screen, those bits and pieces. Um, this is something that could be expanded upon, it's just I've just got a couple of examples at the moment. Um, next up is Fuglo. Uh, so let me just Pull that into here. Pull that in. Um, you can see this is this is an exp exponential glow. Um, now Fusion currently does have an exponential glow, but it's quite intensive because the way it works is you 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 know you have a glow, and then you have kind of a fall off that's double the distance and half the intensity and then double the distance half the intensity um, and you have lots of different iterations of that so the quality of the effect is based on how many times that is done now essentially this is just this is a good compromise between all of them so it's you know it's still working quite fast and looking good at the same time So up next is um, these RGB text and axis align tools. Um, now it's it's really I need you know a large amount of artwork to kind of show you the the true benefit of how this works. But essentially, like a lot of these were created through me doing actual live projects. Uh, and what I would do is I'd get to a point where I felt like I was just spending like so much time redoing the same kind of thing. So I'd actually stop doing the project start working on this create a couple of tools um, and the time it it took me to invest into creating these tools like really paid off in terms of the speed up um, it had on you know the work I was doing so um, just to give you an example of how this would work let's just say we've got um, you've got this this background object here uh, and let's just give this a color then what you do is you hit this RGB button here. It will essentially work its way, search through the entire flow uh, and find all the nodes that have the matching um, RGB um, values there. And then later on, I'll discuss how this multi-tool multi works. Uh, but essentially you can find all the same background objects with the same color, and then you can change all those background objects to a different color. So you've got complete control. Um, and autom being able to automate your workflow across you know your entire flow basically. Text does the the same thing, but just on text objects. So let's just work. Let's say you're working on a text heavy project. Um, you can just find all the text nodes that have this that are essentially the same color and change the color of those all at the same time. This axis um, tool. Now I'm going to show. I'll show you a quick example of how that could work. Uh, let's just say we've got, so let's use one of these mask tools here. Let's go in here, click this, um, and we'll do it off to the side just so the axis isn't in the middle. Um, actually, that's probably a bad example. <laughs> Let me just do that. Uh, what I'll do is I'll just make a shape just over, say, this side here. Okay, so we've got this polygon object, and that's great, but essentially, like, a couple of things can happen here. One, you could manually draw this in here, or you could import the artwork. Now, if you import the artwork and you have hundreds or thousands of individual masks that come in, then your axis point's always gonna be at the center. Um, and if you're animating this, then it's gonna be preferable to have it 
um, at least in the you know in the middle for it to, for you to scale or rotate or you know however you'd like to animate this. Um, one of the second reasons this is quite good is, is because if you have got the access point in the center, when you click on this node, you can then identify you know which one it is just because the axis is in the center of the shape. Um, even though it does highlight, but it's just it just makes things a little bit um, easier. Okay, so let's just select this, uh, then we hit the axis tool here. So you can see the axis points just jumps across to the center of this shape. Um, uh, the reason why there's a bit of a delay is because there's no easy way to just move the axis point straight there. Um, essentially, the way you can access the point, you can't directly move the points. It has to kind of delete the points, recreate the node, and move everything off. So there's just a hell of a lot that's going on. That's why there's a slight delay. Um, but even if you've got hundreds of these, you know, the impact on time is not really too bad. Next up here, we have this Redshift camera, um, and there's this Octane camera. Octane camera is not currently working be just because Octane don't support metadata in the EXR files. So essentially how this works is there's metadata, which is that it's a transformation matrix of the camera. Now that's just the position and the rotation of the camera as it goes through the scene, and that's stored on each individual file in the sequence. So essentially, you know, you, you don't need to export a camera. All that information is actually in your image files um, and you can just extract that out and add that to a camera to composite, you know, 3D in post. So it's not currently installed, which is probably a good thing because I'm going to kind of show you how it works. So if we click here, you can it's come up with this warning saying that it's not currently found. It's not installed. So some of the elements in here, um, because they've not been created by me, um, there's essentially a link, a link to um, a reference within Re Reactor. Now, what I have done is I've set up a preset for the camera um, just so everything's a little bit easier. And there's a quick note here saying that you need to install this. Okay, so let's just go off there. Um, if I go to Workspace and go to Scripts, go to Reactor, um, if you just search for Reactor Fusion, you'll find an install script to install that. Now that's a whole different thing. Uh, but once you've got it installed, um, what you can do is you can go to Open Reactor here. Just give it a second. You know, thousands of scripts out there. Um, and they're kind of all over the place. It's difficult to kind of collect, collect everything, um, find all those individual um, files or scripts or plugins. Um, and all these are three as well. You know, you can just come in here, search for what you need. So we'll just put RS for Redshift, go through, um, let's put camera. Yeah, so Redshift camera extractor here. Check this, it's going to install. Okay, hopefully that will do it. And then, okay, we might need to restart but let's just give it a go okay right so i just need to restart and then I'll be back in a second so essentially what, what it's doing here is taking the metadata and it's interpreting it into a form that the camera can understand so this is the metadata and it's being fed directly into the camera and then you can see inside the camera there's a few things kind of set up so you've got the you know angle of view we've got the focus length we've got um, you know, a few other things in here, transform. Yeah, so you've got expressions on the transform, on the, you know, the rotation, all these kind of things. So essentially line up your camera to, that should be correct to your scene. So what would happen is you would just pull in your EXRs um, and then you would just link your EXR sequence directly into the Redshift camera extractor. Uh, and then that's gonna position this 3D camera in the correct space that it should be based on your 3D scene. Next up, we have text tool. I'm just gonna quickly type in a load of rubbish here on this, uh, pull this in. Um, and what this is going to do is just going to kind of drop everything down on the line. Uh, you've got kind of larger increments and then smaller increments there if you want to kind of get finer with the you know the levels you what you might do is you might find this kind of just skipping a couple of words at the same time but then you'll just jump to these to kind of do it in smaller increments okay we've got an option there to make uppercase lowercase 
another thing you might find when you're using fusion is let's just say you know you we've got this text node here we drop on the transform we pull the transform over to this side you know you've transformed this over here if we add another transform it's going to add a transform in the center now you might want to use that that might be great um, but at the same time the intention might be to transform say let's just say okay we've moved it over and now i'd like to rotate the text so what you can do is there's a different kind of transform here so you've got the transform mode which will move the axis point to the center point here so you can see it's added a transform here and now what we can do is we can rotate around there so it just saves you from moving everything lining everything up it's just a quick way of doing stuff like that okay so the next thing we have is this node display so node currently is a node nobs a, a plugin for resolve um, and that sense it gives you a pop-up window um, and that's something that's GPU accelerated is something you can move around to any screen um, but in the new the latest release beta release of Resolve there is a there's a feature to take a feed directly say from your HDMI, HDMI port on your graphics card directly into another screen and it seems to be really compatible as well it seems to work with non 169 screens um, and the performance is, is quite good so if you go into I think it's workspace you go view screen viewer on and then you just pick your display so let's just say for now i'd like to preview on my third display i'll just click that or other displays that works fine um the problem is it only works when you jump into this edit view or the cut view or you know a color um it's not currently updating within f the fusion view now i'm sure that's something they're going to update soon um because it doesn't make sense for them not to so but currently what i've done here is and this it works the same way with the node display as well it's only currently updating outside of fusion uh, but what you can do is let's just say you make a change what you can you can just hit this button here and it will refresh and it's going to update that view on your second screen and also works the same way with node as well so if you go over to this tab here you can see we've got this more tool now what this is this just allows us to work across multiple nodes at all at the same time so if i click on say one of these background objects you can see it's going to list all these inputs it's going to list all the input types um now the 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 name description here is going to be well it can be slightly different from the description you can see at the side here so if it doesn't make sense say like if i hover over red you can see if you look at the bottom left hand of the side of the screen so look over here you can see it's currently listed as background one dot top left red okay so top left red is what you want to search for here so if we put top left red you can see we're going to be able to access this and it, it i've also just um highlighted these just to make it a bit easier to see so let's just say you know we've got these two background object objects here you can see that one's red that one's red uh, Let's make that one green okay here so red red and green let's go over here what color these go back to the multi tool select this okay so what i want to do is when i say okay well let's just make all these the same color the same color as this one as essentially so select all these highlight this one like I said before, top left red. So if we scroll down, you can see we've got these here. Now let's just change this to say like a, a purple. Double click this, double click that, double click that one. Um, essentially you're updating the separate channels of all of these. So now if we click on this, you can see it's propagated the effects across all these three. Now this is just a quick test on these examples but you know you could have a hundred of these so you know no one wants to go through and change all these individually um, and not only that you know color is just one thing that you can change now if i just list through here you can see how many individual like attributes or inputs that you could possibly change so it can it's going to save you so much time 